Welcome to Algebra 1 with Mrs. Weibark. Week 1, we will be studying relations and functions. We will be discussing domain and range, mappings, tables, and graphs, and the inverse of a function. This week, students are provided with a handout in class in order to take notes for this video. We are going to start by taking a look at some definitions. A relation is a set of information which is ordered. Usually they are shown as a set of ordered pairs. The domain is the set of all inputs of a relation. These are the x values. The range is the set of all outputs of a relation. These are the y values. There are four ways to represent relations. We typically use ordered pairs, mappings, tables, and graphs. Example 1 is included in your video notes handout. Each example in the handout is indicated by the word example and the corresponding number at the top of the slide. Not all slides have a place to take notes in the handout. Keeping in mind a relation is a set of ordered pairs, we can begin with this set of ordered pairs. Notice that the set contains brackets at the beginning and the end to show that it is a set. So this set is a relation. I can determine the domain of this relation by looking at the x values. This includes 2, negative 1, 4, 9, and 0. Because a domain is a set of numbers, we include brackets at the beginning and the end, and it is customary to write the numbers in order from smallest to largest. I can also find the domain of this set by looking at the y values. This would be the numbers 3, 5, negative 2, 9, and negative 6. Like domain, we write the numbers in a set beginning and ending with a bracket, and we write the values in order from smallest to largest. Example 2 is an example of a mapping. We use a mapping as a way to represent relations. It shows a set of numbers called the domain. This is typically the set of all x's. And another set of numbers called the range. This is typically the set of all y's. A relation simply shows how the x's and y's are assigned. We use arrows that go from the domain to the range with arrowheads on the range end. And it shows how the two numbers are paired. So 1 is paired with 6, 2 with 2, 3 with 4, 4 with 8, and 5 with 10. So we can show this relation as a mapping or we can write it as a set of ordered pairs as you can see at the bottom of the screen. In our next example, we're going to use the same set of ordered pairs, so this is the same relation as the last slide, and show how it can be shown in both a table and a graph. To show a set of ordered pairs in a table, you simply record all the x values in the x column, and you record the y values across from their corresponding x. So this would be the pair 1, 6, this would be the ordered pair 2, 2, the ordered pair 3, 4, etc. We can also graph the points on a graph and show that the ordered pairs here would be the point 1, 6, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 8, and 5, 10. This completes the first page of notes in your handout. Take a moment to check your notes and pause the video if needed in order to catch up. Functions are a very special type of relation. A function is just a relation in which each element of the domain, which is usually the x value, is paired with exactly one element of the range, the y value. It's very important to note that for each x, there's exactly one y. Keep in mind that all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. We are first going to start by taking a look at some ordered pairs and determining whether these relations are functions. Our first set of ordered pairs is included in your handout and it includes the points 0, 2, 1, 0, 2, 6, and 8, 12. 
To determine whether this relation is indeed a function, we have to look at the x values. Our x's are 0, 1, 2, and 8. Notice that all of our x's are different. The two questions I need to ask myself is, are any of the x's assigned to more than one y value? Since each x is different, the answer is no. The second question is, do all the x's have a y? And yes, they do, because these are all ordered pairs. So therefore, yes, this example is a function. Our next set is similar, but it also contains the point 9, 6. So again, I look at the x values, 0, 1, 2, 8, and 9. All of my x's are unique, and all of them are assigned a y value. So yes, this is a function. <clears throat> The third set of points is also included in your handout. These first three sets are all included on your handout. And it includes the points 3, 2, 1, 0, 2, 6, 8, 12, and 3, 5. When I look at the x values, I notice that I have 3, 2 and 3, 5. So the same value of x, the value 3, is actually assigned to two different y values, 2 and 5. So because x equals 3 has two different y values. No, this is not a function. The next two examples are not in your notes, but I'd like you to take a moment and try to figure them out for yourself. This one has the points with x values of 3, 1, 2, 8, and 7. Is this a function? If you notice that all of the x values are different, and said that yes, this is in fact a function, you are correct. Our last example, you might notice that all of the x's are the same. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 5, 1, negative 3, and 1, negative 5. So the question is, is this okay? Is this a function? Remember that for each x, there can only be one y. So no, this is not a function because one, a value of 1 for x is assigned to 1, 2, 5, negative 3, and negative 5. So when all the x values are the same, the set is not a function. This next slide contains example 4. A function f from set a to set b is a rule that assigns to each element x in the domain exactly one element y in the range. We are calling this set A and set B. Set A is the domain or x values. Set B is the range or y values. So in order to determine if this is a function, we need to know how the mapping is set up. And we see that the arrows going from 1 to 4 indicate that 1 is paired with 4. We have 4 with 8, 2 with 2, 5 with 6, and 3 with 10. So the first question I have to ask is, are all the x's used? So if I look here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the x's are assigned a y value. So I can say, check, got it, all x's are used. The second question is regarding whether or not any x value is assigned to more than one y. So to be a function, no x value can have more than one y. And that is true in this case. So the x value is assigned to only one y. Check, got that too. So that means yes, in fact, this is a function. This slide contains an example that is not in your notes, but I would like you to take a moment and determine whether or not this is a function. So let's take a look at how the mapping is set up. First, I have to ask, are all the x's used? One, two, three, four. Yep, they all have an arrow pointing to the range. So yes, all the x's are used. The next question is, are any of the x values assigned to more than one y? And no, no x has more than one y. So that is also true. So in this case, yes, it is a function. You might think it looks a little odd that the only number used in the range is four. All the x values point to four, but that's okay. The second condition says that each x can have only one y, but it can be the same y that's assigned to another x. I like to think of this as it's not okay for the x's to be repeated 
or used more than once, but it is okay for the whys to be used more than once. This is example five, which is in your notes. Please add the arrows to show how this mapping is laid out. The first question we need to ask in determining if this is a function is whether or not all the x values are used. One, two, three, four, yes, they all have at least one arrow. But the second question is whether or not any of the x's are assigned to more than one y value. So in asking if this relation is a function, the answer is no. And why not? It's because two is assigned to both four and 10. So that means that this is not a function. This is the completed notes for the second page. Please take a moment to catch up if needed. We're next going to look at how functions can be represented in tables. And this is in the section labeled example six in your notes. This first table is not in your notes, but we're just going to go over it together. When I look at the x values in this relation, I see I have the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, and each of them is indeed assigned a y. Since none of these x's are used more than once, each x is assigned only one y. So yes, it is a function. This table is included in your notes, so please take a moment to fill in the y values associated with each x value. The x values are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And note that the y values are 5, 7, 5, 7, and 5. Is this a function? None of my x values are used more than once. Each x value is assigned only one y value. So yes, this is a function. It's okay to use the same number for the y's more than once. I say that there are repeating y values, and that's okay, as long as there are no repeating x values. This last table is also in your notes, so please take a moment to fill in the y column. Notice the x values are 1, 3, 1, 5, and 7. So when asked if this is a function, I need to look at the case where x equals 1, because that happens twice. 1 is assigned to 2 for y, 1 is also assigned to a y of 6. So this is not a function, because when x is 1, there's two different y values. So that means it cannot be a function. Next, we're going to take a look at some graphs and ways that we can represent functions as a graph. So this relation is a set of points. I'd like you to graph these on the coordinate plane in your notes. This includes the points negative 4, negative 6, 1, 4, 2, 6, negative 1, 0, negative 6, negative 4, 4, 1, 0, negative 1, and 3, negative 4. The question, of course, is, is this relation a function? Yes, it is. Why? How do I know it's a function? If I look at the graph and I look at all my points, I see that there are no x values assigned to more than one y value. I can tell this by looking either at the graph or I could really look at the list of points and see if any of my x's are used twice. So when looking at a graph, you might think of it as no two points have the same x value. That makes it a function. Example eight is also in your notes. It, it, it contains this very long list of points that form a relation. I'd like you to graph all of these as well. We have negative four, negative six, one, four, negative four, three, four, negative one, negative six, negative four, four, one, zero, negative one, three, negative four, and lastly, negative two, four. Is this relation a function? Look very carefully at the points and ask yourself the question, are any of the x values assigned to more than one y value? Another way to think of it is, do any of the points share the same x? 
So hopefully you concluded that no, this is not a function. Because if I look at x equals negative 4, there's two y values, a point up here and another point down here. So these two different points share the same x value. Also, if I look here on the right side, when x is equal to positive 4, there's also two points for that same x. And I can see that 4, 1 and 4, negative 1 is an example of the same x being assigned to two different y values. So this is not a function. This is the completed page 3 of your notes. The next topic is inverses. An inverse relation is just a relation obtained by switching the coordinates of each ordered pair. In other words, the domain becomes the range and the range becomes the domain. In this example, which is contained in your notes as example number nine, this is the relation. The question is, of course, is this function a relation? So if I look at the x values, 1, 4, negative 3, negative 4, negative 1, and 0, I would conclude that yes, this is a function because all the x's are unique. No single x is assigned to more than one y. To find the inverse of a relation, I take each coordinate pair, such as 1, 4, and I switch the order to become 4, 1. The point 4, 6 becomes 6, 4. The point negative 3, 2 becomes 2, negative 3, etc. I could also ask if this inverse is a function. So again, I look at the x values, 4, 6, 2, negative 2, 5, and 1. There are no repeating x values. So yes, this is a function. It's important to know that not all inverses are functions. Some are and some are not. I can also represent an inverse as a mapping. So we're going to start with a very short relation. It only contains one point, the point 3, 8. That means that the x value or domain is 3 and the y value or range is 8. To show this as a function or as a relation, the arrow goes from the domain to the range and this matches the point 3, 8. In order to create an inverse, we reverse the direction of the arrow and 8 actually becomes the domain, 3 becomes the range, and this yields the new point 8, 3. In our next example, we are going to look at how we can include relations or inverses on a graph. So this relation is a set of points, which I have graphed here in red. The inverse is found by taking each point and switching the coordinates. So 1, 4 becomes 4, 1, which I can graph here in blue. 4, 6 becomes 6, 4. Negative 3, 2 becomes 2, negative 3, etc. And I can graph each of those points. Of course, I always like to ask, is a relation a function? So is this relation that's graphed here in red a function? Yes, it is, because for each x, there's only one y value. Is the inverse also a function? So now I want to look at the blue points on the coordinate plane. And in this case, yes, the inverse is also a function, because there are no two points with the same x values. And again, keep in mind that even though both of these examples, the inverse is a function, that doesn't always happen in math. Sometimes an inverse is not a function. This is the last page of notes in your week one video notes packet. Thank you for watching this Wybark production.